Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and this is a get that C and top grade top up combination video on aerobic and anaerobic respiration. This topic was requested by Zara Malik, Kyle Wright, The Londoner and Loopy Lou 4030. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic that you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Let's start with aerobic respiration. Now this is a chemical reaction which takes place inside cells to release energy and it's taking place continuously in all plants and animals. The chemical reaction is controlled by enzymes within the cells and most of the respiration is taking place inside the mitochondria which are small structures within the cell. The reaction can be represented with this equation, glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water and energy. So there's energy being released. Energy is in brackets there because energy isn't a physical substance, of course. It's not a chemical. So it's a little bit unusual to see it in a chemical reaction like this, but because it's such an important part of this reaction, because that's the whole point of respiration, it's often included in brackets in this way. So that sugar and that oxygen, the sugar is coming from the diet and the oxygen is coming from the surroundings. In our species, of course, we gain our oxygen from the air, but if it's something like, for example, a fish, it will be gaining dissolved oxygen from the water, but it's still the same reaction. And notice that this is basically the opposite of the reaction which is taking place when photosynthesis happens. There are four possible general things which organisms will use that energy for, and they are building larger molecules from smaller molecules, contracting muscles in animals, maintaining the body temperature of mammals and birds in cold surroundings. In plants, building up sugars, nitrates and other nutrients into the amino acids which can then be built into proteins by the plants. The equation is important because it lets us understand the effects of exercise on our bodies as well. If you think about it, whenever we exercise, we're wanting to contract those muscles more. So we want to respire more. And we know from this equation exactly what it is that we need in order to cause more respiration to happen. We need more glucose and we need more oxygen. We're also going to be producing more carbon dioxide and more water. Now water's not a big deal, water's pretty important to us and so our bodies will store that water, they'll hold on to it. But carbon dioxide, in large quantities at least, can be poisonous to our bodies. So our bodies want to get rid of that fairly quickly. And so that's why our hearts start to beat faster. Our hearts are pumping the blood around our bodies and that blood is a supply system. It's carrying the oxygen and it's carrying the glucose and it also carries carbon dioxide. So as if your heart's pumping faster, it causes the blood to be pumped faster and it causes the supply of oxygen and glucose to increase to the muscles and it also pumps that carbon dioxide away from the muscles a lot faster as well. You're also going to need to start breathing more heavily because you need to take more oxygen in and you need to exhale more carbon dioxide. Your muscles can also do a neat little trick with any excess glucose. They can store it in the form of glycogen within the muscles. And then when it's needed during exercise, they can re-release that glycogen as glucose and use it for respiration. Think of aerobic respiration as the type of respiration which takes place when there's plenty of air available. So there's plenty of oxygen available. So most of the time, this is the type of respiration which we want to be taking place. Unfortunately, during periods of heavy exercise, you're using oxygen up at a faster rate than you can actually manage to inhale it and absorb it into your bloodstream. And so we get a different type of respiration, and that is anaerobic respiration, all one word. Anaerobic respiration is also a type of respiration and it also releases energy, but it does so without using the oxygen. So here's the reaction which takes place during anaerobic respiration. We start out with glucose and it breaks down into lactic acid. Essentially the glucose molecule splits in two and forms a pair of lactic acid molecules. As this lactic acid steadily builds up during vigorous exercise, it can start to cause fatigue. It can start to cause a burning sensation in the muscles as it starts to build up. Now given time, the flow of blood through the muscles will remove that lactic acid, but in the short term, it can start to reduce how effectively your muscles work. 
they can start to not be able to contract as efficiently as they were once able to if they're not getting the oxygen and if that lactic acid is starting to build up. For higher tier only, you need to be aware of two key additional pieces of information about anaerobic respiration. Firstly, because it's such incomplete breakdown of the glucose molecules, it doesn't release anywhere near as much energy. It releases a bit, but nowhere near as much. And secondly, all that lactic acid that starts to build up in the muscles still needs to be oxidized into carbon dioxide and water. It can't be properly broken down until oxygen comes along. And so those muscles remain in what we call oxygen debt. That is, they are waiting for some oxygen to be supplied to them in order for that lactic acid to be completely broken down. And that oxygen debt can last a few minutes after the exercise is finished, which is why after exercise, people will often continue breathing heavily because they're still trying to get oxygen into their bloodstream to get it to the muscles so that the lactic acid can be broken down properly. On the exam, they may ask you to interpret some data relating to the effects of exercise on the human body. So you're looking at things like the heart beating faster and the breathing being deeper and more rapid. And those, remember, are all about increasing the rate at which respiration can take place. They're all about getting more oxygen and getting more glucose to the cells where respiration is happening and getting rid of the carbon dioxide that's being produced during the process of respiration. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.